So I'd be happy to you know, go into that in more depth if necessary. Uh, other questions for Bill? Frank. Just two questions. So just to be clear, you're not objecting to the notion of a wedding in the park. It's the location. That's right. Subject. Right. Secondly, then the um, um, I haven't studied this a long time, obviously. But when I look at that green, it's sort of the perfect location in my mind. And so I'd like to get your reaction to it in the sense that it's isolated. When I've been down there, there's rarely anybody on the field. It's flat, perfectly yeah. flat for yeah. 10. Um, and with the mound, the, um, I shouldn't know the names of these terms, but the, the land that goes up behind it, which seemed to be able to block sound and, and sort of isolate it and, and give it both privacy as well as not intruding on other people's activities there. Recognize that it's near the lighthouse, right. but from the standpoint of the rest of the park, it would seem to be quite, a, quite an isolated event. Mm -hmm. Plus, I didn't think about the, the parking using the road coming up from the back to keep the cars away. So mm -hmm. what's, given those factors, why don't you think it's a good location? Well, we just thought the green is, um, it's the closest to the lighthouse. The lighthouse is where visitors tend to aggregate, particularly people from away. Um, who come in to see the lighthouse and, and enjoy the sound of the ocean and, and walk, walk around it. And so um, with bands and people and so forth in that area, it's going to take the, the experience that those people would have if they came at a time other than when this wedding was occurring or any other event like that um, would be different. So it, it just, I, we thought it was intrusive. I, see, I, see, I guess the, the point I'd make, I guess, is I hadn't thought about it from that perspective. I was thinking about it from town residents' perspective. Yeah, no, we were thinking about it from the lighthouse yeah. visitors' perspective. Because from town residents' perspective, we probably don't spend a lot of time right around the lighthouse. Yeah. It probably is the ideal location. Right. But from a visitor from away, it might not be. So I guess the question of, you know, where's our priority? Well, uh, Sarah. <clears throat> I guess it. My picture is that the people would park, walk down the sidewalk, go off into the field, and it would be, I guess it matters where the tent is. Is it like right next to the lighthouse, or is it set pretty far away? Because, I mean, they're not going to be sort of milling out around the lighthouse, presumably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And so whatever the start time is, I can't remember on Saturday, two it's 2 o'clock. So from 1.30 to quarter of 2, or whatever, however long it takes guests to quarter, you know, 1.45 to 2, Yes, that would be a big flow in front and a mildly disruptive, but that's like a 15 or 20 minute window. And then I think, you know, Tucker and his family could do a good job of sort of keeping them in the field. Like it's a big field. And if there's a tent and porta potties and everything is clearly centered there, I don't envision the, there would be much drift back to the lighthouse, maybe. Right? That's sort of how I'm picturing Maybe a photograph of the bride and groom. But I don't picture sort of this mayhem around the, the lighthouse. So I, well, maybe I'm picturing it incorrectly. It wasn't so much the people milling the, around the lighthouse. There. It was, it's, the, it's, it's the music. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of thing. The smoke, potentially, from the lobster bake, depending upon which way the wind is blowing. Um, so I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. If that's a nuisance or that's kind of mm -hmm. charming. Yeah, Jim. Um, a, a couple of um, a couple of points. I mean, uh, I had suggested uh, through through Caitlin to her brother that they might consider another location. And one of the locations in the master plan that has been uh, bantered about is at the end of the soccer field, which gets less use uh, at that time of the year, and it's perched up high enough so it does have some views. That's one of the pictures that he's provided to us here. And it obviously doesn't provide quite the panoramic view of the lighthouse that Tucker is looking for. It's actually, Which pictures if have you, If you look at the, um, the, the suggested near soccer field picture, and then you have, you actually have a view there that is not quite as picturesque, if, if you will. So the top right one on the second yeah, page? Yeah, top right. I don't think top um, mountain. But so that was one of the suggestions. The other suggestion I made to Caitlin is in terms of the numbers, that why not bust them in from the, the Cape Elizabeth High School parking lot? So you don't have 100 vehicles entering that place between 1 and 2, and then exiting after the wedding, or you know, starting to peter out of the place at 6 or 6.30 or 7, depending on how, how well the entertainment goes. Um, 
it just seems to me that there are a lot of logistics around this, and, and I think that that's one of the fears of the advisory commission. It's obviously, it should be a fear of ours as well as we give permission to this. But the, 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 the issue that's also on the table is that Tucker has proposed this as a chance for us to learn about having a wedding in this park. While an opportunity like this doesn't come down all the time, it's certainly, if there's a way to figure out how to do this, that it's not going to interfere with the general public's access to this beautiful park on a weekend in June, and to work out the logistics so that Bob Malley and his people aren't spending their time managing a wedding on a weekend, um, and we deal with the parking and the access issue with the 100 vehicle potential. It just seems to me there may be a possibility here. My concern is that we've been in this discussion with, with, our, with really our help, our advisory group, to get the details done. And unfortunately, the timing, is, as Bill said, is, is just sort of out of sync. However, I'd love to see us try it, but I, I want to charge Tucker for the use of it and what learnings we get, we'll get. But I don't believe that it should be done for nothing. And I also don't believe because he has film and all this other stuff that we can access sometime later. I don't think that that should be the, the town's position. If we're going to let you use it, we're going to charge you for it. And if you're going to have to have a police detail, you're going to pay for that. And I also think that, that, this, that there are a lot of other details here that frankly um, I have concerns about a wedding from 2 to 8 o'clock. It's really 1 to maybe 9 when you think about how weddings operate. So it, it's just, it, it's very unfortunate because the timing is wrong because I think this group is doing good work. But I also see an opportunity, but I don't know, do we make a recommendation to the, you know, to vote here to give it back to the advisory Council or Commission to actually work the details out with Tucker to make it happen. I mean, I'm just very concerned about all the details. Okay, but before I go to Ann, then to Sarah, then to Frank, are you then willing to consider the wedding location at the Green? Then is that, or you're still not sure? Well, I'm willing to, I'm willing to consider it, provided we give the right parameters around the details. Because I just don't want carte blanche. Do it the way you want to do it. It's got to be done. We have to have some control. We have control over the beach to beacon. We'll have control over everything else that happens in that park. And I don't want to lose control over this just because it happens to be in front of us. Okay. Ann? Um, this, this is a difficult issue because it involves something that's very important to Mr. Jordan, but it also involves something that's very important to the town which is Fort Williams Park. Um, I, my concerns are that I, I've been very pleased by the way the town has handled the whole vendors issue, the food vendors issue, in that we've developed some rules, developed some parameters, developed the fees, developed everything about trash and everything else. Um, we're getting proposals and we're sorting through them and um, I think it's important to do planning first, set the parameters, set the rules like we've done with food vendors. Um, I'm not disposed to overrule the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. I think they've thought very carefully about it and they've tried to offer an option that would be sort of a middle course. Um, I think it's poor public policy for us to just zip into this too fast. Uh, it would set a precedent. I think it would be difficult for us to refuse others and that we would leave ourselves open if we then did refuse others to say we're cutting special deals for sort of last minute uh, proposals. Um, I look at the benefit to the town and I haven't heard any fees proposed. We even charge a fee for the picnic shelter. 
Um, I don't see us getting any fees. I understand the, getting the videography and the photos, but to me that is not a, a big enough benefit to outweigh the, uh, the risks to the town. Um, and my concerns there are if people are coming in the back gate for, to come in you know, through the back way, if, if they were going to come in and park that way, how do we police that so we don't have other people coming in through that gate? And then we get into uh, people at the door, you know, are you a guest, are you not a guest, whatever. Maybe we have a police detail, I don't know. Um, I do think there's an issue of with the lobster bake of smoke maybe blowing the wrong way. I think there's the issue of parking. I think there's the issue of the, the view from uh, the people who are visiting the, the lighthouse area, sort of heading straight towards the lighthouse. Um, Frank mentioned people who uh, live in town versus visitors. Um, I do not know a lot of people, myself included, take our visitors who always come in the summer, they always want to go out there. Um, and I think it would have an impact uh, on the view. I think there would be noise from the music. Uh, I am not sure how the electricity would work out. It, uh, they would need electricity for the band, it says, so I'm not sure if we'd be paying for that or not paying for that, but um, there's some issues there with cords and how do you access it? Do you have to set it up overhead, run it along the ground, whatever? Um, I think there would be uh, an impact even though it's to the right, over to the right as you walk up to the headlight. I think there's a whole section of the cliff walk that runs right along the ocean there, and I think there are lots of people who like to walk along the cliff, cliff walk and have sort of a peaceful enjoyment, peaceful experience of looking at the ocean. Um, and I think there could be some sort of mixing of, of crowds there, you know, whatever. Um, I think the fort is about relatively passive recre recreation and relatively peaceful enjoyment of the fort. Um, so I'd be concerned about that. I'd also be concerned about the impacts on town staff uh, in terms of public works, the, the uh, volunteers, the park rangers, public safety. Not to say that eventually all these things couldn't be worked out, but the timing is unfortunately very difficult. This is a lot to work out. And for all those reasons, uh, I, I'm not supportive. You know, I'm not. I'm just going to say right out straight, I'm not supportive. I'm sorry, but I'm not supportive of doing this at this time. I think it, uh, the, the costs and risks to the town and to users of the Ford are not outweighed by benefits to the Ford or the town that I can see at this point. So regretfully, I will not be able to support this proposal. Uh, thank you, Ann. Sarah. I disagree. <laughs> um, my feeling is this. I think it was two years ago we, the community gathered together in the cafeteria in the high school because there was a shortfall in the school budget and they were asked, you know, what are we going to do about this? How are, you gonna, how are we going to address this? Do you want to raise taxes, raise revenue, so forth? And my recollection is that every single group there, and we had the papers plastered around the, 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 the wall, Every single person at the top of their list said, please start generating revenue from the fort. It was a very, very impassioned um, message, I thought, from the citizenry, and th that represented many demographics in town. And I speak to people on a frequent basis who are highly frustrated that they feel that we've done nothing toward that end. Now, I know we're, that we're trying, and I commend you guys for the, the, the food vendors, and we are moving forward, but I think people feel frustrated that it's going slowly. I see this as an amazing opportunity to dip our toe in this whole event because the truth is to really generate revenue we have to hold events there. That's just the bottom line. We're not going to make that much money off food vendors. Are we going to have events there or are we not? If we are, they're going to take place in that field. It's the optimal place. It's no mistake that Tucker has chosen that spot. I don't think that Bob Malley would approve having it on the soccer field because it would tear up the field a little bit and we, that's heavily used for sports. The picnic shelter is great for more informal lunch things, but if you want to have a high-end, expensive event, it's going to take place in that field. So I think a fundamental decision we're being asked to make here is, 
Are we willing to sacrifice or partially compromise a few visitors' experience down to the lighthouse? And if you weigh the, 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 the money coming in, that's a few dollars maybe spent at our gift shop. And we're only talking about maybe four or five days out of the summer where if somebody were allowed to host um,